Hey guys, Chris from Adaptivision here, and in this video, I'm going to show you the solution for question 3 from the May 2014 PUA Paper 2. If you want to see the solutions for the other questions on this paper, I'm going to put a card up there and a link in the description below. So be sure to check those out as well. And with that said, let's get into the question. Okay, so just a bit of a heads up before we start taking a read of the information. This question was actually in on incomplete records, which was subsequently removed from the CSEC syllabus. But it does ask us to do a statement of affairs, which is something that is still on the syllabus. We also have to do a very simple control account, which is still on the syllabus. And we also have to do um, an income statement, which, as you know, is still on the syllabus. So I think even though the topic of income records isn't there, I think it's still worth looking at this question as a little bit of practice and as an example. So here goes. Okay, so let's take a read of the information. So it says Jack Rapper, a small business owner, has not kept proper accounts. His son, a trainee accountant, presented the following details for the year ended 31st December 2013. Study the details carefully and answer the questions that follow. So let's take a look at what else they're showing us here. Okay, so the first thing I'm seeing here is a bank account with an opening balance brought forward of 14.5. Accounts receivable, so that's receipts from debtors. That's the only receipt I'm seeing because on the credit side, I'm seeing accounts payable, payments for rents, utilities, general office expenses, wages, and motor vehicle. And of course, the ever popular additional information with two columns, one for the 1st of Jan 2013, so those are opening balances, and then we have the 31st of December 2013. So those are closing balances. Let's take a look a bit closer. So we have accounts payable. We have inventories, accounts receivable, motor vehicles at cost. Not sure who crossed that word there. Then wages owing, utilities prepaid, and cash in hand. Okay. And then there's also a couple of things here that say motor vehicles depreciate at a rate of 5% on cost per annum. So that's straight line depreciation. All purchases and sales were on credit terms. That's good to know. And then purchases for the year total 38,300. All right, so let's see what they want us to do. So the first thing they are asking us for is a statement of affairs on, as at 1st of Jan 2013 for six months. Now, a statement of affairs is simply as a very simplified balance sheet or a calculation of capital assets minus liabilities. So we are going to go up to the additional information and we are simply going to pull that and do the calculation. So of course, please don't forget to head up your statement. Let's take a look at the information in the column for 1 Jan 2013. So accounts payable is a liability, uh, inventories as an asset, accounts receivable as an asset, motor vehicles too. Wages owing is a liability, but there's no balance at the 1st of January. Utilities prepaid as an asset, cash in hand as an asset. There's one other asset that's not listed here. And this was a trick they like to pull. Uh, in questions that dealt with incomplete records. So what they did is that they put a bunch of additional information, a bunch of balances down here. And a bit above in the bank account, they put on the debit side the balance brought forward, 14.5. And that is the balance at the start of the year. So that was a trick that they like to pull in almost every incomplete records question. And I think it, it just kind of went to emphasize that they wanted you to pay careful attention to the information and to look for what you, what you needed and to look thoroughly through the question, which is a good skill to be thorough. Okay, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to start populating my statement of affairs. There. So there's no particular order in which you have to list these items. Uh, I went in order of liquidity just off of a whim in this question, but you can also go in order of permanence as if you were doing a regular, a regular balance sheet. And as you know, there's no one right way to do a balance sheet. So I started with cash in hand of 760, and then I also put in the bank balance of 14,500. So let's see how those two things look across here in the statement of affairs. So we have assets, cash, bank. Next, I went with the utilities prepaid, and then I would have probably put the account receivable of 10,002, as well as the inventory. So let's populate that information inside of here as well. You said it's prepaid, account receivable, inventories. And of course, don't forget the last item we had to put would be the motor vehicle. That's the only non-current asset and hence the least liquid or most permanent asset as well. And of course, we'll have a subtotal there, total asset $60,005. Okay, now let's take a look at the liabilities. So let's head up liabilities here. And there's there was one liability, which was the accounts payable, 6400 because remember, where is owing is a liability, but there's no opening balance, no balance at Jan 1st, 2013. So we're going to populate that there. And when we subtract, we're going to get 53605 
And that is actually the item that we want to show uh, as the last item in your statement of affairs. Okay, let's take a look at the next part of the question. Alrighty, so it says using an account determines sales for the year. And it's only four marks. So this is a very stripped down version of a control account. Let's take a look at the information. Okay, so we have opening and closing balances for accounts receivable. Now remember, it, the question did say that all sales were on credit. So we're going to use the sales ledger or debtors control account. So we're going to put in the account trees, the opening balance and the closing balance. So let's put those across there, shall we? So the opening balance will go on the debit side. The closing balance, of course, would be brought down on the debit side. But prior to being brought down on the debit side, it has to be carried down from the credit side. Now, the other, only other thing that they gave us across here that was dealing with accounts receivable was the receipts from debtors, which, as we know, or hopefully you should know, would go on the credit side of the T account. Right? Primarily because, as you can see, it's on the debit side here, and every debit is a corresponding credit. Right? And now all we have to do to find actual credit sales would be to balance off the account. So we're going to add up everything on the credit side. We're going to get 776 and we're going to minus the 10,002, and that's going to give us a balance of 67.4. And of course, now we're going to show a balance on that side of 77.6, which matches with the credit side. So our credit sales or sales figure is 67,400. Okay, let's deal with the income statement. Please don't forget to head up your income statement, name of the entity, name of the statement, the period to which it applies. So we just calculated sales across, the, well, in the previous part of the question. We are going to also do cost of sales. So we're going to start, of course, as you know, with your opening stock of 89.45. Then we had purchases. The question tells us that purchases for the year total 38,003. So we're going to put that there. There were no returns out or returns in for that matter of fact, no carriage in. So we're just going to add opening stock and purchases and get the cost of goods available for sale. From that, we are going to subtract the 9800, which is the ending inventory. And that's going to give us our cost of good, or cost of sales or cost of goods sold of 37,445, which when we subtract from our sales figure is going to give us our gross profit of 29,955. Now we are going to minus expenses and we don't have to worry about if we have any additional revenue because as you could see here from the bank account, there was only one receipt, which was the account receivable. Now in the expenses section, all we really have to do is take a look at the items inside of here. Now certain items are expenses, right? Rent, utilities, office expenses, wages. Accounts payable, that would have been dealt with already with the purchases. Motor vehicle was spending on the actual, buying a next motor vehicle. That's going to impact depreciation. And we're also going to have to check our additional information for any accrued or prepaid portions for these items here. So let's take a look then. So what was the first item I put across here? I have rent of 6,000, which was just taken straight from here, 6,000. Right, the next item is utilities of 9,100. But don't forget, we had an opening prepayment of 600. So what that means is that this 600 was paid in the previous period, but applies to now. So I know you might be saying, well, here what? I know we have to subtract prepayments, but those are prepaid balances that end. A prepaid balance at start has to be added. Right, so normally I do a T account, but I felt like being a bit more streamlined and not having to do up a whole separate T account, so I just added it here. Okay, next, after you today, we have general office expenses. I'm not seeing anything in the additional information regarding general office expenses, so we plug that figure in wholesale. Next, I'm seeing wages. So wages is 8,600. Now we have wages owing, and that's going to be added because we know accruals at end are added because they represent amounts incurred but not paid. And the income statement, we have to recall what was incurred regardless of how much was paid. And the last item we have to take into consideration is the depreciation. So I'm seeing motor vehicles depreciate at a rate of 5% per annum on cost. So we had motor vehicles that cost 25000 but we also bought an additional 15000 worth of vehicles. So 25 plus 15 is 40. So we are simply going to find 5% of 40,000, which is 2,000. We're going to add up all the expenses to get 31,750, which means we actually have a loss, a net loss of 1795 for Jack Rapper. Okay, guys, so there you have it. That's the solution for question three from the May 2014 PUA paper two. If you have any questions to ask, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll be sure to get back to you when I can. If you want to check out any more videos, I'm going to put some cards up here. Don't forget to subscribe and be sure to check out my website for some free PAA handles that you might find useful. Anyhow, guys, as per usual, thank you again for watching. Take care of yourselves and I'll see you next time.
Bye.